Tom Mentz, the man on a mission. Ever since his debut in 1993, Mentz has continued to elevate the sport to new heights, and still does, not just competing alongside some of the greats of today, but winning against these drivers, and showing he still has what it takes. There's a reason why he's called the Professor and the 12-time champion, and today, you're going to know exactly why. In this mini documentary, we take a deep dive into the career of a legend and a future Hall of Famer, and examine his triumphs and his moments of defeat. This is the career evolution of Tom Mentz. Tom Mentz's star in motorsports was actually back in mud racing. Mentz would campaign the Shake Me Mud Car during the late 80s. His big break would be in Pittsburgh in 1988, where on ESPN TV, he would have a sub 5 second pass and an incredible finish that saw him roll the car over into the safety net, thankfully not injuring himself or anyone else. He would eventually get noticed by Paul Schaefer, most known for the Monster Patrol monster truck and the Mud Patrol mud car. Through his friendship, he had developed by helping out Schaefer during shows and helping in campaign Mud Patrol, he would land himself in the role of driving a monster truck. In 1993, Mentz would make his monster truck debut driving Paul Schaefer's Monster Patrol. Early on, it was clear that if he wasn't winning trophies, he'd be winning over the support from the crowd with incredible moments like his spectacular wreck from Dallas from 1998. His most notable achievement would come at the 1997 Truck Fest event where he'd be crowned the IMJ Day 1 Champion. Mons Patrol would be his ride all the way to 1999, as in 1999, he was actually supposed to debut the Goldberg monster truck. So, Bulldozer would become his temporary ride for the 1999 season. Mentz would have a very successful season behind the wheel of Bulldozer. But, this truck would be the precursor to what would ultimately change his career and even his life forever. On January 8th, 2000, Monster Jam rolled into Atlanta. The show was filled with excitement as new trucks would debut, Dennis bringing in the rebuilt Gravedigger 7, and of course, Goldberg's monster truck having its TV debut in his hometown with Mentz behind the wheel. He would win racing, defeating his cousin Rob Nell in the process. He would lay down a very short, albeit very energetic freestyle, with a spectacular crash that ended his run early. It'd be Dennis Anderson who would trump his 27 with a score of a 30. A pretty spectacular TV debut, right? Yeah, I would say so. But even more impressively, he would continue to follow that up each and every week he was on TV. It may have also helped that Dennis's Digger 7 rebuild kept breaking down and was basically the equivalent of an RC Gravedigger that was ordered from Wish.com. All joking aside though, Mentz was almost unbeatable on and off TV. There was only one thing to do. If TV meant nothing, then winning at the grandest stage of them all would prove something. At the very first World Finals in Las Vegas' Sam Boyd Stadium, he'd prove exactly that. On March 25th, 2000, he would defeat the late and great Scott Hartsock in Gunslinger in the final round of racing for the first ever World Finals Racing Championship. Not just in front of Goldberg, but in front of thousands of fans in attendance and millions around the globe. The following year in 2001 would be much of the same. He would struggle a little bit during the middle of the season, but there was no sign of him slowing down in his championship chase. The only difference was, he wanted a freestyle championship. And with that goal in mind, he really started to improve in his craft for freestyle. He remained dominant in racing, but almost unbeatable in freestyle. He carried that all the way to Las Vegas, Nevada to make it three world championships. That's right, in two years, he was a three-time world finals champion. 
that's a crazy number. But something was changing. WCW had just been bought by Vince McMahon, owner of the WWF, now the WWE, and the license was not renewed. But not just that, something with Mens had changed. <laughs> In the 2005 documentary titled The True Life of Tom Mentz, Mentz would reveal that he wanted people to remember him and to have his own identity. After all, if he was the businessman making the decisions on where and when it would be run, why have someone else's name on it? Not only that, he wanted to further the idea that the names of the drivers were becoming bigger than the names of the trucks, and during the inception of the monster trucks, it used to be the other way around. So Mentz would make sure that people would remember his name because for the 2002 season, he would debut the Team Mentz Monster Truck. That's right, he plastered his name on the side of his truck for the world to see. And as if you thought that wasn't enough of an ego boost, a giant photo of Tom Mentz's head with sunglasses was in the spot where Bill Goldberg's head was on the Goldberg truck. His mindset with the truck and his attitude may have changed, but his dominance across the sport did not. From Atlanta to Tampa, Minneapolis to Indianapolis, Mance would be racking up wins. And when he wasn't, he still was putting on a show. At World Finals 3, Tom Mance would once again win racing and freestyle, making him a five-time world champion and undefeated in racing at Las Vegas. The question was, where to from here? 2003 saw the debut of Maximum Destruction. Just like the previous three seasons, Mentz remained incredibly dominant, laying down standout performances week in and week out. Uh, well, until World Finals. Now, for most Max D fans, I bet most of you like to forget that World Finals 4 existed. And for a while, I did too. It was Mensa's worst year at the World Finals, a sloppy round one race, and knocked out in round two of racing, ending his clean streak. And on top of that, getting stuck in the camper on his first hit in freestyle. But the reason why I feel like it's important to bring this up is this. No one is perfect. Even the man who went 12-0 in World Finals racing in the first three years of the event, sometimes the tiniest mistake or an uncontrollable force can throw a spanner into the mix. Tom Mentz may have been on top of the world at that time, but to me, the events of the 2003 World Finals proved to me that he wasn't perfect and that things can go wrong. As a personality on a TV program, it made his character more relatable, and maybe some of that resonated with him. He would then go back to his winning moments the following year, winning week in and week out during the 2004 season and co-winning the Freestyle Championship at World Final 5. From 2005 onwards, Mentz would continue to be dominant during almost every season and have on and off success at the World Finals. He'd win a Freestyle title in 2006 after jumping one of his own trucks, then would not win again until 2009 in which he would win the World Finals Racing Championship. In 2011 and 2012, he'd make it 10 World Championships by winning back-to-back -back World Racing Championships. In 2013, on the 10th anniversary of Max D, he would win a World Freestyle Championship, making it 11 World Championships. After 2013, his wins at the World Finals would fall silent. Sure, Mentz was still on top of his game, winning almost every show he went to, but World Finals would sometimes prove it could get the better of him. In 2017, he wasn't even there, as he had suffered an injury during the first quarter. But something was changing in Monster Jam, and Mentz would adapt to this change. In my first mini-documentary, I talked about the impact of the skills challenge and the effect it had in Monster Jam. In that video, I mentioned drivers who had adapted to this new driving style and thrived in that competition, and one of those drivers is Tom Mentz. After all, if you're teaching the younger and upcoming generation of Monster Jam University, you'd better hope your professor knows what he's doing, right? 
Well, Mentz would make it 12 World Championships, as in 2019 for the first ever Two Wheel Skills Challenge Championship, it would be Mentz coming out on top as the victor. A pretty impressive feat if you ask me, considering he went up against the likes of Tristan England, Tyler Manninger, Ryan Anderson, and even his own teammate, Neil Elliott. In a time where speculation remains around who is the greatest of all time, or GOAT to some call it, then I'd say from start of their career to present day, it has to be Tom Mentz. He has the most world championships, he's entertained thousands of fans with his jaw-dropping saves, his memorable moments and his jaw-dropping stunts. He showed the world why he's the best, winning pretty much every event he's at and battling closely and fiercely for a points championship. He can talk the talk and can walk the walk. It doesn't matter what truck he's in, whether it be Goldberg or Team Mentz, Maximum Destruction or Bulldozer, or even Gravedigger. Yes, he did actually drive Gravedigger once. Tom Mentz will burn it down every time. Tom Mentz is on a mission, a mission that involves two main points, entertaining his loyal and dedicated fans and being the GOAT, the greatest of all time. Thank you everyone so much for watching and I will see you all soon with some more Monster Truck content. Destruction. Total. Corruption. Mass. Destruction!